Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 10 American Aircraft Carrier Midway. We are on the map Loop. The build is on the screen, and I just want to talk about the build first while we're doing an initial spot. So, I played the game out with this build, but I don't recommend this build because Demolition Expert increases your rocket fire chance by 1%. Well, guess what the rocket fire chance is? For the American aircraft carrier, it's it's in the 30 percentage, so 1% is unrecognizable. And then on top of that, the dive bomber fire chance is in the 60 percentage. So having 5% improved fire chance on an already ridiculous fire chance high explosive bomb, eh, the three points are not as valuable as I try to make them in this game. So that's the one qualifier. I would probably switch out Demolition Expert on my American aircraft carrier for something else. However, this is a game without site stabilization, and you're going to see the difference. One of the key uh, components where you know site stabilization has no benefit is the attack rockets, because they have adjusted them so much, the aim in point is actually providing a, a significant amount of aim and until you reach your green state site stabilization does not provide any benefit so you know on a significant amount of your squadrons you don't really see the benefit of four points so that's why i'm a concealment build it allows me to disengage and force the enemy to not know exactly where i am and hopefully in this game it'll help me as well as an, as an aircraft carrier now, we spotted the enemy, they were attempting to capture AIM, they used their smoke, and I don't know, there's some enemy Des Moines that's near them, I didn't want to stay over the target too long, but we know at least one DD is capturing AIM. Now, I wanted to check on C point, because I'm over here, my team's primary flank is over here, and there's something trying to capture it. So I just scrambled another attack rocket in an attempt to spot the other DD, remember there's only two one has already been spotted capturing A, the other one quite clearly is capturing C, and oh, we find him, but look, I think we found him too close. Yes, we did. We could not get in time, and he was able to avoid the attack rocket. The aim just couldn't settle down by the time we spotted him. I needed to try and predict it without seeing him, but, you know, made the mistake. He used his smoke, and now we will never see him again until he captures the base. But it does look like a teammate was successful in disruption. So that's that's at least okay. But at this stage of the game, we have B-Point. Um, the enemy is attempting to take C. Looks like the Shima has sent his torpedoes. Friendlies are gonna have to avoid it, and they need to be careful. I don't know if the Minotaur is gonna be safe. Okay, he is, he is very safe. But teammates are potentially moving to capture C-Point while the enemy is pretty dominant over by A. I am one of those players that the high explosive bomb exploit is going to be nerfed. So I don't want to practice it because it's not practicing good technique. So that's one thing that you might be wondering. You know, not so why aren't you, you know, dropping your high explosive bomb on cooldown and waiting until, you know, half a second left and, you know, forcing it all into the top half of the... It, it, that's not going to be a viable strategy because eventually it'll be fixed. We just know it. It's, it's a cheesy strat, so I'm not trying to do that. Uh, what I'm trying to do is keep this Minotaur spotted because he is way too aggressive. And on the back half, we caught the Shima trying to escape. They still haven't captured C point, so I'm just going to come back. Friendly was able to kill the Shima. He made the mistake of leaving his smoke, and now all that's left is the Minotaur, who had to smoke. He fires his guns, he's spotted, and I'm able to rocket him inside the smoke. Friendlies are able to fire on him, and oh, he's he's gone. He's so gone. Those Tiny Tim rockets, they turn the attack rockets into monster cruiser damage tools. I, You will notice those rockets are gonna carry a significant portion of this game over the course of it. And man, I, I, I really underestimated the way the rockets can really deal with cruisers. Because cruisers are very 
They're very elusive. They can, they can dodge out of the way of torpedoes or minimize it to one attack. They also have defensive fire, and they could couple their AA with others. So cruisers are not the easiest target to attack, and I can't get in position as comfortably as I want to with dive bombs against certain cruisers. You know, like a Minotaur is pretty ridiculous. So we're just attempting to fly. Uh, I'm being a little cheeky here. I would not recommend this. This was definitely a mistake. Definitely a mistake. And uh, you want to know what the plan was? The plan was to drag it over my fighter and for it to be completely wiped out. Well, joke's on you. Completely wiped out your attack squadron. I needed to attach the fighter from a greater distance. That way I could have easily flown it through the friendly AA aura. Or I could have pressed my F key, recalled my aircraft, and by the time the fighter caught up to them, they would have entered into their invulnerability state and started flying over to me. Those were the two things I was trying to do, and neither one was successful, clearly. But we've got our dive bombs, there's multiple enemies over here pushing, we've got a Montana, there's also an enemy DD, the only one left. And uh, I'm definitely going to try and keep him off of my teammates who are out west, trying to slow down the enemy. But as we're moving forward, we're just trying to see one, one aspect of uh, improved concealment on aircraft. It reduces the search area that you need to do in order to discover whatever happens to be detecting you. I really like this for DDs, of course. Plus, radiolocation is disabled for aircraft carriers now, so you can't use that as a tool to locate enemies. The next best thing is the search area of your aura. But we're dropping on this enemy, Hindenburg. The uh, Hindenburg takes significant damage, and I'm trying to rotate back around. He does have defensive AA, and I am taking too many losses. Whenever presented with an enemy like this, you only have one valid attack. Then you have to fly through and avoid. By doing that uh, extra attack, I mortgaged a lot of my short-term dive bomber to get one extra 10k damage. I shouldn't have played it out that way. I played it incorrectly. And hopefully you understand why. But, regardless of the mistake just made, we've got to try and do the best we can for our team. And that involves stopping the Shimakaze, who is out in our spawn, basically. So I fly very quickly over with my attack rockets, and we locate him. Now, I do have the Tiny Tims, and that means they're not going to be as good against DDs. And, oh, the speed of the DD, I needed to lead him better than that. But the Tiny Tims are really made for cruisers and battleships. They are, they're not ideal against DDs, which isn't that big of a deal with high explosive bombs being so broken, especially against DDs. And we're able to do just a little bit. We've got one more pass. Enemy as a whole, there looks like there may be sort of a backing up cruiser at B point who wants to maybe capture and contest. I need to try and deal with the Shima in the most quick, safe way. And we do get a very nice attack on the Shima, but he's still alive. And, of course, he has smoke. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why are you going exclusively after the Shima? Because if I don't, he's actively searching for me. That's quite clear. If I am actively, you know, if I'm underestimating his threat... By not going after him, I am allowing him to dictate the pace of the game. But by me going towards him, he has to stay honest. And he did not stay honest. And you're going to see something very interesting. Here's the... Oh, we're going to use the ability, right? Oh, we dropped the bomb. Oh, wait, we didn't. Because the server lagged, and there was 0.1 second left on the aim... And that 0.1 second left was actually 0, .0 based on the server, and it was a completely waste of a drop. Well, we're coming around for a second pass. The enemy Shima is trying to avoid, but he's just so low that all we need is a single bomb. And, you know, a single bomb is okay. It's when you manipulate the system to have all your bombs drop on a really small target. That's where I have a problem with it. But I think we, we did it in the most fair way. 
he did definitely try and uh, cheat a little bit by leaving the smoke. He should have waited for the friendly Des Moines to catch up to him to provide that AA bubble. He didn't, and he's gone for it. But we're still being pressured by these enemies in the north. I've got to try and slow them down. Meanwhile, this Des Moines is pushing forward. That Hindenburg in the background that we've been damaging with our dive bombs, he's very low. So I was like, mm, do I want to go after him or do I need to slow down the Des Moines? Prior to this, though, I haven't really done enough for my team. I have a really tough time with the, the sort of the beginning of the game as a carrier. I, I try, I overcommit way too much with my squadrons. Uh, I, I try to get too much out of their value. I, I should just be happy with a single attack. Now, we set up a nice, clean attack on the Des Moines. I expect two, three, four torpedo hits, hopefully. We're going to do the same to the Montana. This is one layering attack that I really love about the carrier. You can do this against three or four different ships that are, are all in a line. And by being in a line like that, you can you can do quite nicely, you know, 10, maybe 20,000 damage between all of that. It's really cool, and it, it's something that hasn't existed prior to this new reworked carrier. I've never felt like I could hop between enemy ships and, you know, have a very continuous clean attack between all of it. But I totally can with the carrier, and it's a really enjoyable experience. Now, enemy Moskva... He's, he was attempting to back up into B. We're sort of stopping that. In response, I'm using my high explosive dive bomb because I can be point blank on him. And he's going to definitely not enjoy this. But this is fair. This is exactly what the dive bomb counters is this stationary uh, camping. And we do very good damage. The enemy does drop a fighter on top of us. And I'm going to disengage with line of sight. Looks like someone is using their defensive AA, maybe the Moskva. Because of that, I'm going to recall. And I'm not going to try to do a single point of damage more. There's nothing else to salvage there. That's the best approach. Once you see an enemy commit to using something that's devastating to your aircraft, probably the best thing is to line of sight and disengage. You don't want to lose the squadron. You want to try and minimize losses so late game I can still be effective. I'm still recovering from that dive bomb mistake that I did earlier. And of course the attack rocket mistake. That would be very useful against the cruisers that are out here. But I've got my torpedoes. There's a Hindenburg who's sort of using the island to fire behind it. He has been relatively stationary so... Maybe he's going to be just as stationary, and oh, look at what we've got here. He is absolutely stationary, but he is a Hindenburg that has his defensive AA skill. So I'm just going to place the torpedoes at basically point-blank range on him. And I'm going to try and get the hell out of range, because he still has his AA aura, but we do cause a flood, and... I do think he's set up very nicely, but I'm going a little too fast, and I just can't rotate around. Every single time I choose to fly over the target for a second pass, you see the outcome. I get punished for that, because the target still has defensive fire, or a fighter consumable, or whatever. It's not the right play. And each time, it's, it's really obvious. But we're still in this game. We have two bases to their one. And we've had that for a good bit. We have a, a point advantage, even though we have lost, I think, two more ships than the enemy. I obviously want to take advantage of the fact that the Hindenburg used his defensive fire on the previous squadron. So we're just, you know, casually getting over to him. I don't want to rush over because there's still a 50 second or so. The enemy, the enemy aircraft carrier, as a counter move, used his fighter on top of the Hindenburg. And my counter move is to go towards the Zhao, who's isolated, and won't be able to benefit. Now, the Zhao might use defensive AA, but at least he's not going to have a fighter. And I don't want to waste time. I think that's really probably the best approach if you're presented with something similar. Don't waste your time. Do something else active. Don't play into their hands. And, of course, the enemy has a fighter, which he calls upon. 
And this fighter, which he calls upon, is going to stop me from attacking it openly. And I am considering, do I, do I want to try and make another pass on the Zhao? Or do I want to see if maybe the enemy Hindenburg, or if I can disrupt the Muskva? Remember, the Muskva is still in a B. He's still alive. I have been basically the only person who's had a chance to damage him. But this Hindenburg, he seemingly has moved off, or the fighter consumable has ran out. He's vulnerable to attack. So I'm going to go in after him, since they've already captured B. Now he's, once again, fairly stationary, and his friendly aircraft carrier tries to spawn a fighter, but it's too late, my friends. It's way too late. There's nothing you can do at that point. But the fighter attaches to us. Now it attaches to our dive bomber in a way that gave it distance. Because it attached to the dive bomber, and I had probably two kilometers on it, instantly recalled my aircraft. By recalling, I won't lose any, and it will pull the fighter charge that the enemy aircraft carrier just used off of the map. Not that he really needs it in that map location because I killed the target, but regardless, that was the technique I just made use of. And we're losing friendlies. Every, you know, kill we get, the friendly gets another kill. And they have two bases to our one, so we've got to make a play, and we're making a play on the Zhao. Remember, he used his fighter, and we've got Tiny Tim rockets, which are really, really good against cruisers. Like, they're probably the first take. They just, they move so fast. They pretty reasonably set a fire. A cruiser obviously doesn't want to allow the fighter to, the fire to stick on their ship, but he can't do anything. He's just going to burn down because he's already used his damage control. And since he's already dead, we might as well go to another part of the map because each and every time we get a kill, the friendly, the enemies get another kill on a friendly. So, yeah. Moving in, I would really like to do damage to the Muskva and attach the fighter to the recalling squadron. We do get two fires on the Muskva. That's definitely going to force out a damage control. My fighters apparently are able to deal with the enemy midways. But we've got an issue here. We have the Iowa and he's bearing down on the Zhao. So I have to, I have to call an audible. I've got to try and kill the Iowa before he kills the Zhao. I don't know that we can win the game with the Zhao dead. And the Zhao looks like he's flooding the target. He's also on fire. I'm going to go superstructure on cooldown. I could also go Bower Stern because I have enough pin. But I just wanted to guarantee damage so that he's dead and my teammate isn't. Iowa taken out. Sea point is ours. It's two to four. The enemies are bearing down. They're trying to push through. And I want to try and attempt a snipe on the Muskva. If I can get the Muskva, you know, pretty much the game is over. So, obviously, we've got one more attack squadron on this. Aim up very accurately, and we should do, you know, tons of damage. I'm actually a little overextended in this position. <laughs> I need to duck back into the island, and yeah, I'm, I'm still on cooldown calling in the attack rockets. They are by far the quickest squadron at getting in and getting out. We've got to get the kill. I mean, we, we don't have that much time. We've got a minute left, and the Muskva is the only way we win the game. We, the only way we win is if we kill him. And we set a fire on a target who has recently used damage control. He should be burning down. Friendly is chipping. Oh, he actually just used damage control. We've got to get the kill. Come on. If we aren't successful and we lose the squadron, the game ends right there. But we do get the kill. We earn Kraken Unleashed. And there's 30 seconds or so, which isn't enough time to come back for them. We have accomplished the unthinkable. The team came back and we won this game. I can't believe it. It looked pretty dire there, but we held on just enough to win the game. Now, as the midway, five kills, I think 140 or 150,000 damage done, 2,732 base XP. Fantastic. But I really enjoyed the way the game came together. Attacking targets, them using a defensive or a fighter or having a friendly drop a fighter, having to call an audible and go after a different target or having to desperately try and get another kill just to keep us in the game. That's what the midway and that's what the carriers can provide. 
And honestly, it's a really compelling proposition. It just has to be balanced. One versus one, clearly superior. I love the sort of fighter attempt counterplay by the enemy carrier. It made it more fun, and I enjoyed just dealing with the problems as they came to me. I hope you enjoyed this Midway game. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.